Our first word is grown up. A grown up is another word for adult. Your mother and your father are adults. They are grown ups. One day you will be a grown up. Okay, next word. Group. A group is a collection of people, right? Several people. Two people, that's a pair, right? Two people is a pair, right? Three people or more, that's a group. A number of people who live, work, or play together, right? Who live, work, or play together. Already you can see there are different types of groups. People who live together, one type of group. People who work together, another type of group. People who play together could be another type of group. Okay, so many different types. Types of groups. Types of groups. Okay, next word is team. A team is a type of of group. Remember I just said live together, work together, play together? Well a team is a group that plays together, right? A group of people who are on the same side in a game. Do you play soccer? If you play soccer, you're part of a soccer team. You play on the same side, right? Another team, they are the opposing team. Opposing team, right? You try to beat them in the game, right? A group of people who are on the same side in a game, a soccer team, or, you know, many different types of team. Could be a chess team, could be a tennis team, many types of teams. Now, here we have a video. Now, it says team here, but what kind of team is this? What is going on? What is, what do you see? This is very interesting. Let's take a look. These people look like surfers. Surfers. Yes, because there's many of them. A surfer is someone who rides a board when the wave comes. Let's check out the video here. Now they're moving. You can see that they're moving and they're getting closer and the water is getting uh, higher in front of them, right? But they're using their arms and they're swimming through the water and they're going to, uh, when the water gets up high and they can go down the wave, they can stand up on their board and go down. Now they're probably all part of the same surfing team. You think about surfers are usually individuals individual. An individual is one person, not on a team. But these are people are all together. Maybe they're on the same surfing team. Okay, good. Next we have class. Now class has many different meanings. In this meaning, it means a group of students who study together at school. Think about your school. You go and you study math. That is your math class. When you say, are you in my class, you're talking about the group of people who are in the same room with the same teacher at the same time. That is your math class. I am part of your math class. Now, somebody who's taking that uh, subject, they're studying math, but they're studying an hour earlier than you, maybe the same teacher, maybe the same room, but different time, they're not part of your class. Your class is the same group of students who are studying in the same room with the same teacher at the same time, okay? That is your class. That's one meaning of class. So a group of students who study together at school. This looks like a nice a uh, nice friendly class. That's a good class. Yeah, they like each other. That's good. Okay. Next we have guardian. Ooh, that's, a himdoro, uh, that's a difficult word. Guardian. A guardian is someone who protects and takes care of a child like a parent. Now, that's interesting because parents are also guardians. Parent is a guardian. Your mother and your father is a guardian. But 
Sometimes they're busy. They can't take care of you. So they, you know, they, they bring you to school. And during school time, your teacher is your guardian. They take care of you and they protect you if need be. If you're too young to go to school, maybe you go to a daycare center and the people there are your guardians. Maybe your mom and dad have some important business or for some strange reason they have to leave for a few days. They might give you to your grandma or your grandpa or an uncle or an aunt and then they will be your guardian until your parents come back. So a guardian is usually an adult who takes care of you like a parent. They protect you and they, you know, they take care of you uh, while your parents are gone, but your parents are also guardians. Okay, so good. Finally, we have parents. Parents are the father and the mother of a person, right? Parents are usually two, well, two, right? You have a man, you have a woman. Those are the parents. They get together, they have a baby, they are the parents of the baby. You have parents. Someday you will grow up, you might meet um, uh, a handsome guy or a beautiful woman, or just actually meet someone who you like, who is your friend. And uh, that person, you can get together with them, you might have children of your own, then you will be a parent too. You and your best friend will be best, uh, will be parents, S, right? Parents. Okay, good. Next, we have belong to. Now, we talked about groups. Groups are, you know, three or more people. Usually we talk about more people. But uh, you have an individual, right, who joins the group. They belong to this group. We, we can use those two words, belong to. I belong to this group. Remember I talked about classes? Are you in my class? Yes, I belong to your class. Or we belong to the same class. That means to be a member of a group. I belong to this team. I belong to this group. Okay, good. Next, we have raise one's hand. What do you do in class? Well, you raise your hand if you have a question. Do you have a question? Raise your hand. I can't see. Are you raising your I'm sorry. Of course, I can't see if you're raising your hand. But if you have a question uh, in class, you should raise your hand. Don't just say it. Raise your hand. So that's something, that's kind of a rule that you should follow when you're in a group like a class. So different groups have different rules and raising your hand is a rule for that group. It's a rule. A rule is something that you should do as part of that group. Okay, those are our, that's our vocabulary for this lesson. Now let's take a closer look. American Textbook Reading Social Studies Book 3 Lesson 1 Types of Groups Grown-up An Adult Group a number of people who live, work, or play together. Team A group of people who are on the same side in a game. Class A group of students who study together at school. Guardian Someone who protects and takes care of a child, like a parent. Parents The father and mother of a person Belong to To be a member of a group Raise one's hand To lift one's hand
Our first vocabulary word is park. Park. It's a place, a public area. Public area. What does that mean? You have a public area and a private area. A public area. Everybody can go there. There, you, it's not private property. Somebody's house, where they say you can't come into my property. It's a public area. All the citizens can go there. All the people can go there. You can go there to rest, right? Lay in the sun. You can walk. You can play. You can walk your dog. Ride your bike. Just be careful and respect other people in the park. Park is an outdoor area. Okay, that's our first word. The park. Second, a zoo. Great. Is this your favorite place to go to? Have you been to a zoo before? If not, I recommend that you go to a zoo soon. You can see many different kinds of animals. For example, in the picture, we can see a giraffe. Can you see a giraffe in the park? No, of course not. That's crazy. But you can go to a zoo and see giraffes and maybe lions, monkeys,、um, uh, penguins. You can see all sorts of animals from all over the world. So a zoo is a place where various kinds of animals are kept for people. That's you and me. To go and see them, okay. So if you haven't been to a zoo, I recommend it. Okay. Our next word is child. It's actually two words: child care center. Child care center. There are many centers in your neighborhood. Child care is an adjective. It's the type of center, right? You might have a sports. Center, right? But in this case, we have a childcare center. So, center is a place、uh, that is made for a specific purpose. In this case, it's a place where children are taken care of while their parents go to work. If your mom and your dad both work, they're not at home to take care of you. And if you're too young to go to school, you should go to a childcare center. Sometimes people call them daycare center. It's the same thing.、Uh, childcare center, daycare center, same thing. So people other than your parents. Can take care of you while your parents are busy during the day. Okay, so that's a childcare center. Our next word is a type of person. The type of person here is an artist. Artist. An artist is a person who paints. In this case, paints. Or draws, or makes some kind of art. Artists are very creative. They have a big imagination, and they use that imagination to make art. Whether it's painting, or making a sculpture, or drawing, or whatever, they are artists. Okay. Next, we have a word improve. Now, this is a verb. It talks about an action to make something better than before. When you improve something, you make it better than it was before. Now, you can also improve yourself. Every day, you can learn something new, and that's how you improve. Yourself, so good word, right? Okay, let's continue. Next, we have avenue. Avenue. Now, an avenue we can also say it's a street, but there are many kinds of street. An avenue is a wide street in a city, right? It's a nice、uh, street. Maybe trees, lots of 
well, lots of cars. In some cities, though, avenues can be a little smaller, but they have many trees and in a nice neighborhood, it's an avenue. We can also call it a street. We can call it a road. Some streets are boulevards. Boulevard is a very wide avenue in a city. So an avenue is just a wide street in a city. It's another word for street. There are many kinds of streets. Okay. Next, we have another type of person. This type of person is a scientist, a scientist. Notice the white lab coat and the gloves. Sometimes they wear protective glasses because sometimes scientists do experiments with dangerous chemicals, right? Just a scientist is someone who is looking for more knowledge. They are constantly improving their mind, their knowledge. So a person a scientist is a person who studies science, but really it's a person who studies nature and things that happen in the natural world. And they want to know why, how, right? They want to know these questions. Maybe you want to know these questions. Maybe you will grow up to be a scientist one day. Okay. Next, we have an Architect. Oh, that's a difficult word. Repeat after me. Architect. 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 An architect is a person who designs buildings. They don't make the buildings, they design the building. So if you like to draw and you like big buildings, maybe you can become an architect. You can draw and plan buildings. And then many people will build a building based on your design. Pretty cool, huh? So architect, okay. Next we have an inventor. Many things that we use in our life, right? They were made for the first time by someone a long time ago, or may, nowadays, just a few years ago. These people are inventors. They make new machines. They make new tools. So an inventor is someone who makes something new, a person who makes something new. And we have a picture of a famous inventor, Thomas Edison. He's famous for many inventions. Probably the most famous invention is the light bulb, bing, right? We have electric light bulbs thanks to Thomas Edison. Okay. Lesson two, living in a neighborhood. Park, a public area where people go to rest, walk, and play. Zoo, a place where various kinds of animals are kept for people to see. Child care center, a place where children are taken care of while their parents are at work. Artist, a person who makes artworks. Improve, to make something better than before. Avenue, a wide street in a city. Scientist, a person who studies science. Architect, a person who designs buildings. Inventor, a person who makes something new. Okay, in the vocabulary section, our first word, actually it's two words because it's an adjective and a noun. Adjective urban, noun area. 
urban area. Actually, we can just call this a city or a big town. You probably live in an urban area. An urban area is a large area with many houses, not just houses like one story house, but big apartment buildings, right? Lots of stores, many office buildings, lots of streets, many cars going back and forth. Be careful in an urban area, especially on the streets. So, an urban area is usually in a big city or a large town. Okay, that's an urban area. Many people living close together. That is an urban area. Okay, now a suburb. Many cities, right? Downtown in the cities, you know, like lots of office buildings, lots of cars, many people rushing back and forth. Now, those people probably work downtown because there's many office buildings. But when they want to go home, they don't want to stay in a very busy, noisy area. They want to go out. They want to go outside the city. So there are many smaller, more quiet places outside the city with maybe homes where one family lives in one building. It's a, a one story, maybe a two story building. And there's many trees and the streets are wider. Not as much traffic. So a suburb is an area near a city. Usually there are many houses in a suburb, not many businesses, maybe a grocery store, maybe a laundromat,、uh, something like that to help people living there. But usually it's just houses, 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 houses everywhere. Okay, that's a suburb. Next, we have Crowded. Now, crowded, we think of an urban area, right? We just learned urban area. Urban area, there are many people living and working close together. It's filled with lots of people. It's very crowded. Okay? And we have things like crowded buses. If you go to a city on a bus, the bus gets more and more people until it's very crowded. It's filled with many people. So that is. Crowded. Okay. Next we have subway. Sub means under. Way is a path. So it's an underway, underpath, right? It's un usually subways are underground, they're below the street. Yeah, sure. Sometimes the subway comes up and you can see it on a bridge or something, but usually the subway goes in a tunnel underground. Under the city, where it can go really fast and carry many people from one place to another. So, a subway system is a railroad system. Railroad, it's like a train and it's on a track. You have rail, one rail, two rails. It's a railroad system and it goes many different places. So, it's a system which usually, like I said, runs underground. Sub, under, way. Underground. Interesting word. Okay. Subway. Maybe you take the subway to school. Maybe your father or your mother takes the subway to work. Okay. Rural area. Now, if you get outside of the city, you may be in the mountains or in the fields, in the valleys, and there's lots of trees, and there are many fields, and farmers grow crops or raise animals. In the rural area. We also call this the countryside because it's a natural area. It hasn't been developed. Yes, there's maybe a house here, a road here, but most of the area is natural. It has trees, it has grass, it has、uh, running water, rivers, mountains. It's very beautiful. The air is fresh. Okay, so that's the rural area, that's the countryside. Next, we have a field. Like I said, in the countryside, farmers may grow plants and they may grow plants in a big field. A field is an open ground, it's usually flat, right? Usually flat. It could have an angle, but usually it's flat where people grow plants, right? So if you grow rice, it's a rice field. If you grow corn, it's a cornfield. But a field is a place of open ground 
where people, farmers, grow plants. Okay, that's a field. Also, by the way, you can also have a field where you play sports. So you could have a baseball field or a soccer field. It's not just for plants, it's an open area used for some reason. Okay. Next we have office building. Where do you find an office building? Yes, you find an office building in an urban area, right? In the city, you find an office building. So an office building, of course, is a large building. It has many stories. It has many floors. Floor one to floor 50. Wow, it's a really tall building, right? So it's a large building containing many offices. Many people go there, they have a desk, they have a computer, and they have a phone. Well, they, maybe their cell phone nowadays, but they do work. They meet other people, uh, they plan projects, they do work in an office building. It's where your mom or your dad goes for his or her job. Okay, it's an office building. Now, the next word is an adjective. It describes what a place is like. Now, think about this. Is an urban area noisy or is a rural area noisy? Well, usually we think about urban areas being noisy because noisy means making loud, unpleasant sounds. So, if you're in the city, you can hear cars beeping their horn, beep, beep. You can hear construction workers using machinery to break the ground, juk, 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 juk. Right? You can hear the subway, you know, going uh, underground. Sometimes they have the vents. You can hear the noise. Click, 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 click. There's all these loud, unpleasant noises around you as you're in the city. So that's another reason people don't like to live in the city. They want to live in the suburbs or in the countryside because it's quieter. It's not noisy. So in the city, it's very noisy. Next, we have quiet. Quiet is the opposite of noisy. In the countryside, it is quiet. Yes, you might have cows going moo. In the morning, you have uh, roosters going cock a doo doo doo, right? So that's noisy. But usually, it's very quiet and calm and peaceful in the countryside. So quiet is making very little sound. It's also what your teacher says when you're supposed to take a test or study by yourself. Your teacher might say, shh, be quiet. Don't make noise. Okay, good. Lesson three, types of communities. Urban area. A large area with houses, stores, and offices. Suburb. An area near a city. Crowded. Filled with lots of people. Subway. A railroad system which usually runs underground. Rural area. The countryside. Field. An open ground where people grow plants. Office building. A large building containing many offices. Noisy. Making loud, unpleasant sound. Quiet, making very little sound. Our first word is Protect. Protect means to keep something or someone from harm. 
if you prevent something bad from happening to yourself or to somebody else, you protect yourself or somebody else. In this case, a police officer protects people. Okay, in the next one we have solve. Solve is to find an answer to a problem. So, of course, if you, if you like math, if you have a math problem, hmm, you try to solve it. But there are many problems we can solve, and sometimes we play games to solve games as well. For example, if you like to put a puzzle, a puzzle together, a puzzle, how do you spell puzzle? P-U-Z-Z-L-E. This is a puzzle. If you put the puzzle together, when you finished it, you have solved the puzzle. So to solve is to find an answer to something. Next we have consequence. Consequence, that's a big word, right? It's a big meaning too. The consequence is the result of something that you do. If you do something, what happens? That thing that happens, that is the consequence. If you do something bad, the policeman comes and takes you away to jail. That is the consequence. Don't worry about that. Don't do anything bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next, we have permit. Permit, not permit. Permit is a noun. Permit is a verb. Uh huh. Permit, to permit someone. Permit is a noun. It's a piece of paper that allows you to do something or some card or ID that allows you to do something. So to permit is to let someone do something. So if you have a permit in your car, you are permitted to park in this parking spot. Okay? So permit, to permit, sorry, to permit, to permit, and I have a permit. Okay? Permit, verb, permit, noun. Okay. Jail. Okay, we talked about consequence before, right? If somebody does something very bad, they break the law, they might go to jail. Well, they should go to jail. Depends on what they did. Um, jail, of course, is a place where people go when they break the law. This person is in jail. He's not happy, right? And, of course, he's wearing the prisoner uniform, the typical uh, classic prisoner uniform, because he's in jail. Okay. Next, we have respect. It's a good word. It's an important word. Respect. To admire someone or something for their good qualities. Here we have a picture. It's important to respect older people because they're wise. They have a lot of experience. You can also respect things. You can respect laws, for example. You should respect police officers. You should respect the laws of your country. You should respect your parents, of course. Okay, so respect. You should also respect each other as human beings. Very important. So respect is a big word. Small Respect seems like a small word, but it's a really big idea. Okay. Okay, that's our vocabulary for this lesson. Next, we'll take a look at some other ideas in this unit. Lesson 4. We are citizens. Protect. To keep something or someone from harm. Solve. To find an answer to a problem. Consequence. The result of something that you do. Permit. To let someone do something. Jail. A place where people go when they break the law. 
Respect. To admire someone or something for their good qualities. First, we have lead. <laughs> This guy looks very happy, right? He's leading the people behind him. He's showing others the way. Leaders have ideas about which way to go, how to solve problems. Usually, which way should we go? Should we solve the problem this way? Should we go this way, or should we go this way? Leaders choose the way and show people, "Let's go this way," and they lead. The other people in that way to solve the problem or to do something that is good. Next, sign up. Sign up. When you sign up, it means you volunteer or you agree to be a member of a group by writing your name. If there is a club at your school, like let's say there's a book club, a group of students get together and read books and talk about them. Well, if you want to join them. You probably have to sign up. In other words, they have a form, a membership form, a membership form, membership form. A form is a very common word. Form. That's an O. Form. A form is a piece of paper with、uh, parts printed, like name, and then you fill in your name. You fill in a form. Fill in. Okay, I'm giving you a lot of words. Sorry about that. But but you fill in the form. You sign up for a group. You sign up for、uh, a club or a team or some other group by writing your name on the form. Okay. Next we have run for office. Run for office. This is a little bit of an old picture, but、uh, I, I recognize him right away. John McCain. He ran for president in 2008.、Uh, so he ran for president. He tried to be president. He didn't make it. He wasn't voted as a president, but he ran. For president, so when people say they're going to run for office, it doesn't mean they're actually running. It means they're going to try to be elected as a public official, and they run for office. They try to get people to vote for them. The person with the most votes wins the election. So the winners and the losers both run for office. So they all run for office, but only、uh, a certain number of people. Can be elected to office. Elected to office. Okay, disagree. If you disagree with someone, you have a different opinion about something than they do. We have two women here. The one on the left side says yes, I agree, but the woman on the right side says no, I don't agree. So they disagree. Right. If you say no about something and somebody says yes, they disagree with you. Right. Okay. So to disagree, dis. By the way, this is easy to remember. Dis is a prefix. It means not. So very simply, not agree. You do not agree. Dis means not. Okay. Resolve. Resolve. Remember. In a previous lesson, we learned solve, right?、Um, so solve is to find a solution to a problem or to solve a problem, right? But resolve means to find a way to solve a problem when it is in disagreement. So some people think we should do this, but other people think we should do this to solve a problem. You resolve the problem is you find a way to make everybody. Agree or everybody happy in a type of situation when two groups or two or three or it could be four or five it could be many groups don't agree and you resolve the situation means you try to find a solution that is acceptable to all the groups who previously disagreed. Again, they still might disagree, but at least 
If you resolve the situation, you find a solution that makes them satisfied, that satisfies all people involved in the disagreement. Okay. Conflict. Conflict is a disagreement about something. When people are in conflict, they do not agree and they might argue. Hopefully, they don't fight. Conflict can also mean fight. So, for example, in the Middle East, we hear of many conflicts, and that's when, you know, not just countries, but groups within countries are fighting, actually fighting with each other. We say this area is under conflict. But conflict can also mean just arguing, speaking, and that's, that's a better type of conflict, of course. So, conflict means a disagreement about something. Okay, those are our words for this lesson. Okay, now let's take a look at some more ideas where we can use these words. Lesson 5 Voting for Leaders Lead To show others the way Sign up. To agree to be a member of a group by writing your name. Run for office. To try to be elected as a public official. Disagree. To have a different opinion about something. Resolve. To find a way to solve a problem when it is in disagreement. Conflict A disagreement about something. Okay, our first word is democracy. Democracy is a type of government. It's a government system in which people can choose their leaders by vote. We all live in a democracy. Remember in a previous lesson, we talked about voting and choosing leaders. When you vote, you cast your ballot to choose your leader. That is a democratic system. It is a democracy. Okay, next we have threat. <laughs> this is an important word. Threat is something that causes danger or harm. It's something that could cause danger. Um, a threat, yeah, it, it says causes danger or harm, but it's really a threat is before the harm or the injury has occurred. It's more like danger, right? It is a threat. If you say something is a threat, you're saying it has the possibility of causing harm, right? It is dangerous. It is a threat. So it hasn't done it yet, but it is a threat. Maybe it's done it in the past, but it is a threat, okay? So that's a threat. Justice. Justice is a very important idea, right? Uh, and we, it's usually represented by this picture here. You see the scales, the scales of justice, right? And that means being fair in treating people. Why do we use scales? Because, well, it's, a, it's kind of a capitalist idea, I guess. If, if you go to buy something, right? And you say, well, one ounce of gold is worth this amount of goods. So you have to balance it, right? So if it's balanced, it's fair. If you pay too much, that's not fair. If you pay too little, it's not fair to the other person, right? You want something to be fair. So justice is about being fair. Fair means treating each other in an appropriate way so that each person is satisfied with what they have. Each person feels that, okay, I wasn't taken advantage of. Take advantage of is the opposite of being just. Take advantage of. If you hire somebody to do something for you and they do the job, like work on your house or something like that, and then they do a good job and you don't pay them, you took advantage of them, right? You didn't treat them fairly. 
Okay, so justice is the system of being fair and treating people, making sure that everybody has the same or equal chances, opportunities, and that they are treated well for their actions. Okay, and that everybody is treated the same. That's another part of justice is that everybody has the same opportunities and they have the same punishments for the same actions. If they do something bad, they're all treated the same way. Okay. If they're if they do something good, then they're all rewarded in the same way. That's what justice is. It's kind of a big idea. Injustice. Okay. So we just talked about justice. Now we have injustice. And remember, in means not. So not just, not fair. It's injustice, being unfair in treating people. In this case, again, we have the scales. So in this case, we're saying that, well, actually, this is an interesting uh, picture because we have women are, are more valuable than men in this. Usually, it's the other way around, that men are treated more valuable than women. You know, many people complain that men are paid more than women, for example. But in this scale, this shows that women, because they're heavier, they, they have more value than men, right? So, but they should be equal. Right. It should be equal opportunity. Uh, uh, chances for opportunity should be equal among men and women, among different races. It doesn't matter who you are, uh, what you believe, uh, what ethnic background you have. It doesn't matter. Everybody should be treated equally. And if the system does not do that, then it is injustice. It is not just. It is not just. It is an injustice. Okay, next. Allow. Allow means to permit, to, to permit or to let someone do something. You're in class, the teacher's talking, you have to go to the bathroom. What do you do? You raise your hand and say, teacher, may I go to the bathroom? And the teacher will say, yes, you are allowed to go to the bathroom. I give you permission. I'm going to let you go to the bathroom. So to allow somebody, say, okay, it's no problem. I allow you to do that. Okay. Next, we have march. March means to walk forward with regular steps. Now, usually when we think of march, we think of soldiers in an army, right? And they're, they're uh, having some kind of parade, right? And they're marching. Tuk, tuk, tuk. Or, you know, they're just going from one place to another by foot. March means to go someplace by foot. But march also has another meaning, and it's an important meaning here. And you can see it in the picture. So march is a political event where many people get together and they all walk to a certain place that has some significance. For example, nowadays, early 2020, right, there are many people marching in America and all over the world because of what they see injustice in the police system. So they get together and they march to City Hall or they march to the police station to show protest. Now we do have a video, but this is a different kind of march. This is this is a parade. This isn't a political march. This is more of kind of like a parade. These guys are just marching through uh, the street. And it's more for a, a festive or celebration occasion. But marches can also be political. And they are usually like a type of political protest. A march is a, like a political protest against injustice. Okay? So that's a march, especially when many people get together and they walk from one place to another to show that they are not happy with the system. Lesson 6. Working for Justice. Democracy. A government system in which people can choose their leaders by a vote. Threat. Something that causes danger or harm. Justice. Being fair in treating people. Injustice. Being unfair in treating people. Allow. To let someone do something. March to walk forward with regular steps.
Okay, our first vocabulary word is history. History. Now, some people like to make a joke, or maybe it's you know it's a kind of an observation, I guess. His story. <laughs> So it's an interesting way to look at it. Of course, it's only talking about men then history. But if you think about it, most history was made by men, written by men, and they focused on men. But of course, there are many famous women also in history. But of course, history doesn't come from that. I'm just making it. It's like a, kind of like a joke or an observation. Uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't come from that. Okay, it's just kind of an interesting thing to remember. But history is a story of what happened uh, a long time ago, or, or you know, not even a long time ago, but what happened in the past in particular places. The definition here is the things that happened in a particular place. But of course, we could also talk about you know you can talk about American history, European history, Asian history, Korean history you know, a particular place, but you could also just talk about history in general, which is world history. You know, what happened on the earth, right? So, uh, you know, a particular place on the earth as well too, but that's history. And usually when we talk about history, we're talking about written history. So history only goes back uh, to a time when people started writing things down, right? So written history. Uh, sometimes you'll see people talk about uh, written history because when a long time ago, thousands of years ago, when people invented writing, then we could re then we could remember things that happened a long time ago. How did people know what happened before reading? Well, they told stories. But if you tell a story many times, that story changes and it's not very reliable. It's not very accurate. But when you write it down, still it's not. 100% accurate, but at least it's more accurate because it doesn't change if you go to the original source that was written 100 years ago, 500 years ago, 2,000 years ago. It's still the original source. It's not 100% accurate, but it's more accurate than just telling stories for many generations. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because sometimes you hear people talk about prehistory, and basically, it's an interesting word. It means before history, although it's it's not really true. I mean, it still happens, so it's history. But when they say prehistory, they're talking about what happened before people knew how to write, and they call that prehistory, prehistoric. So when we talk about cave people, people living in caves, and they didn't have written records, we call that prehistoric times. So kind of interesting uh, idea or um, a fact about uh, the word history. Okay, let's continue. Native. A native is a person who has lived in an area since birth. If you were born in Korea and you've lived in Korea since you were born, you are a native in Korea. If you move to China, you're not a native in China, right? Then you become a foreigner or uh, immigrant, right? Uh, you're not a native in China. You're a native in Korea. Same thing if you were born in uh, if you're born in France, you are a native of France. So natives are people who live in the certain area. They're like the original inhabitants. Of course, when people were exploring and going all over the world, you know, they were not natives. They were explorers. They were leaving their home country and traveling to different countries. And they, who did they meet? Well, of course, they met natives in those countries that they visited. So that's usually what native means. Bark. What is bark? Uh, it doesn't mean a sound a dog makes, although that's true. <laughs> in, a, in English, we say dog barks. Ruff, ruff, right? That's a bark. But this is a different kind of of bark. Bark is the tough outer covering of a tree, right? You know, so if you see a tree in the forest, right, and you touch it, it has a hard covering that protects the inside uh, from insects, from the rain, from the weather, from the sun, so that the water inside the tree doesn't evaporate. But that we call that bark. And some trees you can peel the bark off. It's a hard covering. Okay. It's tough. They say it's tough. Tough here means hard or strong. Tough is hard or strong. So somebody who's tough is hard and strong. Okay, bark. 
Canoe. A canoe, and we have a good picture of a canoe. A canoe is a narrow, open boat that is moved by a paddle. They're very easy to turn. They, they turn very quickly, and uh, they're very easy to move because they're small, and you can just use a paddle. Uh, another word for paddle is oar, but oar is a little bit different. An oar, an oar is kind of like, you know, a long piece of uh, um, wood with a blade on the end. And usually you have two oars and you, you move your boat like this. But a paddle is just one, one oar, and we call it a paddle, and it's light. And you can do this for a very long time to make your canoe go through the water. Now, American Indians were famous for using canoes because Europeans, I mean, Europeans had canoes, but uh, when they came to America, they saw the Indians or the natives using canoes. And so canoes became very fixed in their minds and associated with uh, Native Americans or Indians, Indians, Native Americans. Buffalo. Now, that's an interesting picture of a buffalo. <laughs> a buffalo is a kind of animal that looks like a large cow with horns. The reason I said that this is an interesting picture is because this looks like the Asian type of buffalo. Uh, I think it's also called a water buffalo. Water buffalo. But it's not the kind of buffalo that we see in America. Oops, sorry. Buffalo, not a. Buffalo. I, I switched those around. Okay. Okay. Buffalo. Um... Yeah, just look at this. Don't look at my writing. <laughs> okay. A water buffalo or Asian buffalo is different from an American buffalo. The American buffalo, uh, again, it's kind of similar. They're related, but they look different. The American buffalo is, is quite big. It's actually quite dangerous, and it doesn't stay in one place. Buffalo in America, they roamed for hundreds of miles, and they would go north and south following the cold and warm temperatures to eat the grass. Of course, they would move south in the wintertime to get away from the snow. And then when it got hot and too dry in the south, in the summertime, they would move back north. And the, the buffalo in America, oh, the buffalo in America are also called bison. Bison. And the Amer these were very important animals to the Native Americans because many Native American tribes in the middle of America would follow the bison north and south. They didn't live in a, they didn't have like villages or towns. They were, uh, they were travelers. They traveled all their life and they followed the animals because they got food from the animals. They got, they used the animals, uh, hide the skin for clothing and for shelter. They made tents out of them. They used the bones to make many different types of tools and even, um, uh, uh, arrowheads, sharp uh, parts of the arrow that they would shoot to kill other buffaloes. So bison were very important to the Native Americans who lived in the Midwest of America, the middle of America, very wide area uh, up and down uh, the area north and south, going north and south. So it looked like a large cow with horns, but they are not cows. Cows are kind of peaceful. Bison can be very dangerous. If you go to America and you go to a national park like Yellowstone National Park, you can see many bison. They also call buffalo. Be careful. Don't get out of your car. Don't go up and try to pet them. That's very dangerous. Don't do that. Right? Stay in your car. <laughs> okay. Usually they won't bother you, but you don't want to be out of your car if they if they run at you. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Anyway, here we have a video. And this is a video of looks like a water buffalo. This is not an American bison. This is uh, this is not that type of buffalo. This is more like a. It looks like more a peaceful, uh, more domesticated uh, type of uh, buffalo. Okay, that's a water buffalo. Okay, so um, yeah, let's continue. Hide now. Like I said before, the bison were very important to the American Indians because the American Indians would hunt the bison, kill them, and they didn't just eat the meat for food, they would skin, take the skin of the bison, and of course it has a lot of hair on it, fur, what we call fur, and it's very warm. And so they would use, we call the skin and the fur together, the skin and the fur, we call that a hide, right? And it's just basically the skin of an animal, but it also has uh, hair, fur, we call that fur, F-U-R. Fur is hair that grows really closely together. This is not fur. This is hair. But I have a lot of hair. Anyway, <laughs> it's not fur. Um, 
uh, fur would be like an animal where it's very thick and it's warm, right? So it's warm. So think about it. In the cold winter, the, the hides were very good for clothing. It kept, helped keep the Indians or the Native Americans, it helped keep them warm in cold temperatures. So it was a very important source of clothing. Okay, so that's our vocabulary for this lesson. Lesson 7 The First Americans History The things that happened in a particular place. Native Living in an area since birth. Bark The tough outer covering of a tree. Canoe, a narrow open boat that is moved by a paddle. Buffalo, a kind of animal that looks like a large cow with horns. Hide, the skin of an animal. Our first word is journey. Journey is traveling to a place, especially at a long distance. So you might think, well, what's the difference between a journey and a trip, right? They're both similar. They took a trip, they took a journey. But a journey usually means a long trip, and it's a difficult trip, and you have many experiences on the way. So, of course, if you fly from Europe to America, that's just a trip. It's not really a journey. But if you get in a boat and you cross the ocean for many months, whew, that is a journey. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between journey and trip. Explorer is our next word. An explorer is a person who travels to an area usually the first person to travel to that area to learn about it, to discover a new land. But, you know, many explorers, when they have traveled, they come to lands, there's people already living there. So it's not like they discovered it. They discovered it for the people back home, right? The people in their home country don't know about this land. So they're kind of exploring that land for the knowledge of their own native people back home. Okay, but of course, in many places in the world, explorers would go to a new, a new area, but there were people already living there. Okay, so they didn't really discover the land, but they did explore it for their home country. Okay, moving on. Adventure. Have you been on an adventure? An adventure is something that is exciting, usually interesting, hopefully it's fun. Not always fun, but hopefully it's fun. Adventure has a positive meaning. So an adventure, remember the word journey? We talked about that before. A journey is a long trip, maybe a difficult trip. Well, an adventure is a journey or event with unknown danger. But usually we think of adventure in a fun or exciting way, like you take an adventure to uh, a camp or you take an adventure to the beach and some interesting things happen to you. But of course, when we read books about adventures of people a long time ago, they, ex they faced many dangers, but it was exciting and they survived. So it's an adventure or like an adventure story. Okay, like Peter Pan would be an adventure story. Okay, next. Colonist. Now, a colonist is a person, how do we know that? Because IST, whenever you have IST, you know that it's a type of person. It is a person who lives in a newly settled town. And really a, col a colonist comes from the word colony, and colonies are when one country or one nation sends its own citizens to a foreign land 
and they make a town there. Okay, it that new land is not really part of the nation or the country where the people are coming from, but they're establishing, like they're they're claiming that land as their own, and they're sending their people to live there, and that is a colony. Of course, we don't practice that anymore. Thank goodness. Okay, um, because most of the areas are settled, and people have rights to their own land. So we don't have colonies anymore. But a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, many countries would wanted to spread out and claim land around the world, and they would send out colonists to populate their colonies. Okay, a settlement is a type of colony, right? A settlement is a small town. In a new area, new area for the home country, right? So the home country would,、uh, you know, they go out, they explore, they find new lands, and they create a small town. They would call that town a settlement. Okay. Next word, survive. To survive means to stay alive or to go on living. Now, of course, it's very easy to survive these days. We have many conveniences, but hundreds of years ago, people、uh, had. Difficult time had a difficult time surviving in places that were new to them. Right, if they go to a new place and there aren't any towns or、uh, cities or things that they are familiar with, and they have to live in nature, well, then it's very difficult to survive. So, it survive is you know to try to endure difficult conditions and to continue living. Copper. Copper is a type of metal. There are many types of metal that are important to people. For example, copper is probably the the most common rare,、uh, co- most common valuable met- metal. Most common valuable. Well, it's probably tin, but copper is is maybe next to that, and then silver, gold, platinum. Right. So copper is relatively common, but You need to mine it, and it's a metal that we can use for many different things. Now, a long time ago, copper was a metal that well, it still is, but copper was used to make things like pots and uh, uh, pottery. It's still used. Copper is still used sometimes to make cooking pans, but usually, copper nowadays is used to make electrical wiring. Right? It's all it runs through all the wires to make light. And to give electricity into your home, so it's it's kind of red brown and it's relatively soft. If you take a knife and、uh, try to push it into copper, you will leave a mark. So it's a little bit of a soft metal, but it was very useful because it is a metal. Many metals, of course, are very useful to human beings. Okay, next. Lumber. Lumber is another type of resource. Metal is a resource. Lumber is a resource, but lumber comes from trees, right? If you cut down a tree and you cut the tree into very long parts, you have a very long piece of wood. It the standard size is two by four, two inches. By four inches. Sorry, I don't know the centimeters, but two by four. The, these are two by fours. And it just means two inches wide, four inches long, and that is a standard size for lumber that is used to build houses. Right, a wood that is cut up to be used, and usually we make houses out of lumber. Okay, those are our words for this lesson. Lesson eight: Explorers and Early Americans. Journey, traveling to a place, especially at a long distance. Explorer, a person who travels to an area to learn about it. Adventure, a journey or event with unknown danger. Colonist, a person who lives in a newly settled town. Settlement. A small town in a new area. Survive. To stay alive or to go on living. Copper. A kind of metal that is red brown and relatively soft. Lumber. 
A wood that is cut up to be used. Our first word is explain. When you explain something, you make something easy to understand. Now, be careful with the word explain. Don't say explain about. Okay, this is a common mistake. Don't say I would like to explain about something. No, I would like to explain something. There's no reason to use about. And when you explain something, usually you're talking about how is something done. For example, I have a cell phone. I have there's an app I want to put on my cell phone. I don't know how to do it. So my older brother will explain it to me. He will explain how to install the app on my phone. That is to explain how something is done. He will not explain about it. No, he will explain it. Okay? So be careful using that word. It just means to make something easy to understand. Right now, I am explaining to you how to use the word explain. Uh huh. See what I did? Okay, very good. Let's move on. Okay, unite. Unite means to come together, right? To join together as one group. In your class, you have many different students, and they all have different ideas. They all have different interests or wants. But the teacher tries to get the class together and say, "Hey, let's join together and all work together." For one goal, to learn something, and then you unite as one group, and that's very important when you want to accomplish a goal. If you work together and you unite, you can do the job much more easily. So that's a good idea. Unite. Okay, next one. Wow, two words, long words. American Revolution. Revolution. Now, many countries have had revolutions, right, where they've sought independence. So, but the American Revolution is the war in which American colonies fought against England for their independence. And of course, this happened in, oops, sorry, 1776. It's a date that all American school kids know very well because that's the date of the、uh, Declaration of Independence, right? And that is when、uh, the colonists, who were British subjects, decided, "Hey, we don't want to be British subjects anymore. We want to have our own country." And so they declared their independence. Independence means you do not accept the authority of somebody else. You say, "We, I can,、uh, I can live by myself, by my own rules, or together as a group, we can make our own rules. We can have our own government. We don't want to be subjects of another government. We want our own independence." And that was what the American Revolution was all about. Okay. Last to la now last has a lot of different meanings, right?、Uh, you know, it's the opposite of first, first, last. But that's not the meaning here. The meaning of last here means to endure, or to be, or to exist for a long time. To endure, or to go on for a period of time. It will last, right? How long will it? Last, okay. So if you're、uh, having a hard time, sometimes you know something's happening in society, or you know you have、uh, some difficult circumstances. Don't worry; those circumstances will not last for a long time. After a little while, it will be over. Sometimes you want things to last for a long time, right? If you're having a good time, you're enjoying some. Uh, activity with your friends, you want it to last for a long time. Okay, so last can have negative or positive meanings.
Okay, very good. But it just means to endure for a long time. Okay, next. Courage. Are you brave? If you are brave, you have courage. Right? If you remember the story about Dorothy and the land, uh, she goes to the land of Oz and she meets a lion. And the lion is not brave. The lion wants to see the Wizard of Oz to get his courage, right? So courage is being brave to do something dangerous or potentially painful, right? Nobody likes to go to the dentist, right? Oh, it's painful. But don't worry. Be brave. Be courageous. And it's good for you to go to the dentist, right? It's good for your health, okay? So be brave. Be courageous. Do the difficult things, uh, you know, be, but be smart about dangerous things, right? But sometimes you want to do things that might be a little painful, difficult, maybe a little bit dangerous, but remember safety first because you need to do them to improve yourself or to protect yourself, but especially to improve yourself over the long run, okay? So have courage. Don't be shy. Don't be timid, right? Shy and timid are the opposite of brave and having courage, right? Uh, so that's the opposite. I'll do this. That shows opposite, not equal, opposite. Okay, good. Gain. When you gain something, you get something, right? So to gain something means you get it or you win something. I don't know what this baby did, but he or she one gained a trophy, right? I don't know about sports. Maybe maybe sports for kids like that? It looks like a sports trophy. But anyway, you won something. You gained it. So it gained, though, kind of has the idea that you worked hard for something, right? And it was difficult. And you, after some difficult time, a lot of effort, you get it, you gained it. So if you study for a long time, you will gain some important understanding. You will gain some important knowledge. So studying is good. Okay, next. Warn. Now, if I tell you to be careful, to watch out for something, that means I am warning you about something. So warn means to tell someone to be careful about possible danger or harm. And of course, this is a good uh, example, road sign. When you're driving a car, uh, your mom or dad can see signs on the side of the road and they warn them, hey, up ahead, there's a dangerous curve, right? Or in this case, be careful. The road is slippery, right? If it's wet or icy, you have to be careful. So the road sign will warn you about these dangers that are coming up ahead. But warnings are not just on roadsides. They can, you can get warnings from many things, especially your friends and your parents will warn you about potential dangers. Listen to warnings and be careful. Think well and be safe. Okay, good. Those are our words for this lesson. Lesson 9 A New Country is Born Explain To make something easy to understand Unite To join together as one group American Revolution the war in which American colonies fought against England for their independence. Last. To endure or go on for a period of time. Courage. Being brave to do something dangerous or painful. Gain. To get or win something. Warn. To tell someone to be careful about danger or harm.
Okay, now we have our vocabulary section, and our first word is producer. That's what we're talking about, right? Producers and consumers. So, what is a producer? Well, a producer is a person who makes goods, who makes something. By the way, producer is an interesting word because you have the word here, produce. Produce is a verb. Produce means to make something. To make something. So if you make something, you produce it. You are a producer. And now we have the er ending. Er that means a person. Aha. So in English, it's very interesting. If you take a verb and you add r or er, it makes it into a person. What are some examples? For example, drive. Drive. If your father or your mother drives a car, they are a driver. Aha!、Uh -huh. So drive a car. A person who drives is called a driver. And many words in English. Are similar to this. So if you see the er ending, you know ah, it's a person probably who does the verb, right? Like producer or driver. Not always, but most of the time, it means a person who does something. In this case, a person who makes goods. All right, good. Next word. Provide. Provide is a verb. To provide means to make something available to someone. To make it available, it's also like to give something. If you provide it, you give it. But really, you make something available to someone. Now, wait a minute. Remember what I just said about verbs. Do that with this one too. If you put an R here. Ah, that's a person. Provider is a person who gives something. A provider and a producer are very similar in meaning. A producer makes something. A provider gives something. Okay, interesting. Let's move on. Product. Now, product. Now, product is a noun. It's a thing. A product is something that you can hold, that you can use. It's something that is grown, like fruit or meat, something you can eat, or it's made for sale in a factory or by hand. So, a product is a thing, a thing that you can actually touch and feel. Maybe you can eat it. Maybe you can sit in it. Maybe you can drive it. But it's a thing. It's a physical thing that you can use, and it's either grown or made by somebody. Next word is a marketplace. We just talked about products. Usually, products are things that you buy, right? Things that you can use. You can eat. Well, if you want to eat something, you might go to a marketplace to buy something to eat. You could also go to a marketplace to get clothes, right? To wear those things, and clothes are a product too. So, a marketplace is a place where people buy and sell goods. And services. We'll talk about that in a bit. But marketplace is actually two words that have been combined, right? So we have market, and we have place. So we have the first word is market, and the second word is place. Place, of course, is a location, right? It's an area. It's a specific place you can go to. Your school is a place, but we don't call it school place. We just say school. But market, a market. Is an area where you can buy and sell things, and this has a very old, old tradition. You know, markets have existed for thousands of years. So we just kind of combine the two words. It's a place where you can buy and sell things. It's a marketplace. Other words that are like marketplace, of course, store. Store means the same thing. A store or a supermarket. Supermarket. Usually, market was just a place where farmers sold、uh, fruit, vegetables, meat, things like that. That was the old definition of a market. But markets developed; they became 
they, they used to sell more and more goods. So now if you go to a market or a supermarket, you can buy anything. You can buy paper, you can buy shoes, you can buy shirts, you can buy an apple. So it's a supermarket, not just a market where you buy food, but a supermarket. You can buy anything at a supermarket. So we call it super, supermarket. But it's also, these are marketplaces where you can buy and sell goods and services. Okay. Consumer. Ah, we have another word that ends in ER. To consume means to, well, the most common meaning of consume is to eat or drink, but it can also mean to buy or to use something. So a consumer is a person who buys goods or services. When you go to the store and you buy something, you are a consumer. Okay. Raw material is our last vocabulary item. It's two words, raw material. Raw means that it hasn't been changed. It's in its natural state, okay? It's what you find in nature. We haven't changed it or we haven't made it into something else. It's the raw material that we find in nature. It's a basic material. Raw is like a basic material. It's not been changed. It's what you find in nature that is needed and used to make something. So if you talk about, you know, like a watch, right? The raw material to make the watch is the metal in the earth. But the it doesn't look like this when you dig it up. It's very small, right? You have to mix it together and then melt it and you get metal out of that. And this is not raw material. This is a finished product. So raw material is the, is the basic, the very basic material that you get out of the ground or that grows from the ground that you get from nature to make something else. Okay. And that's our vocabulary for today. Interesting words. Let's see how they are used. Lesson 10. Producers and Consumers. Producer. A person who makes goods. Provide. To make something available to someone. Product. Something that is grown or made for sale. Marketplace. A place where people buy and sell goods and services. Consumer. A person who buys goods or services. Raw material. A basic material that is needed and used to make something. First, as always, we start with the vocabulary. So let's learn some new words. The first word is actually two words, right? The first expression is two words, and it's human resources. Human resources? That sounds a little strange, doesn't it? We're going to use humans as resources? But it's not that strange. And when you think about it, Many different people have different skills or different talents, and we want to be able to use those skills or talents to help other people. So that's what it's meant by human resources, right? People's skills and abilities. I said talents. Ability is the same as talent. So you could also say their talents. You are talented. You have certain abilities that you're good at, certain skills that you're good at, those are your talents, right? That a company or organization can use. And of course, in a company or organization, there is a human resources department. And in that department, those workers are interested in how to best use the skills and talents of the people at the company. 
So that's what they're doing. That's what they should be doing. Okay, good. Human resources. Okay, next we have capital resources. Capital resources, what are those? In economic terms, capital usually means money. But in this case, the capital resources mean things like tools, tools like a screwdriver or a hammer, right? Machines, actually machines are a type of tool, right? They're a big a piece of machinery that does some action like robots. Robots are machines and buildings. Buildings are also capital resources which you need to produce goods. Actually, we can also call these things assets. Asset. A-S-S-E-T-S. -S -S -E assets are things that a company owns and they are they're another form of money because you can sell these things and get money for them. So capital, capital usually means money when you're talking about business. Capital investment, capital resources, these are things that the company has that are, that's worth something. It's worth a certain amount of money. So capital resources are basically tools and tools, machines, buildings, they're all types of tools. They're things that allow or help the company to produce or to make products. Okay. An orchard. Now we've left like the industrial world and we've gone out into the countryside. Okay. So an orchard. An orchard is an area in the countryside. It's an open area. It's like a field where people grow fruit trees. Now when you think about food, there's a lot of different uh, vocabulary words that you can use for different types of growing food. You can say a field for when, when people grow corn or wheat, we just call that a field. But if you grow apples or oranges, uh, those types of fruit that grow on trees, we call those areas an orchard. So an orchard is a place where trees grow and the trees stay there, right? A wheat field, you cut down the, the whole plant, but an orchard, don't cut down the trees. The farmers will get very angry, right? So, so those trees stay there, but they produce fruit every year. It's an open area where people grow fruit trees and many different types of fruit. That's an orchard. Irrigation. Well, whether it's an orchard or a field, the farmer needs to get water to those plants because of course plants need water to live. Every, every living thing needs water. So how do they get water to an area, especially if it's not raining? Well, they set up an irrigation system and irrigation is just means watering land through pipes to help crops grow. A long time ago, people would dig uh, like these long trenches and they would get the river, a nearby river or stream to go through the trenches in their fields. But with modern technology, we can use pipes to carry the water into the field and we can, you know, have little uh, other tools that spray the water over the plants or just holes in the pipe that will drip the water out into the field so that the plants get the water they need to grow. Sort. Now sort here is a verb, right? To sort. To sort. Let's imagine that you have a lot of toys in your bedroom at home. You have marbles, you have little action figures, and maybe you have some games. Well, they're different kinds, right? So you're going to sort them. You're going to put all the marbles together. That's one kind. You're going to put all your action figures together. That's one kind. And you put all your games in one kind. If they're all mixed up, you know, you separate them and put them in different groups. That action separating into different groups is to sort, to arrange things in groups according to their kinds. So marbles over here, action figures over here, games over here. You have sorted your toys. In this case, we can sort, you can sort apples and it looks like a factory. Maybe there are some humans also working there and basically what they're doing is they're picking out like a good apple or uh, the right color of apple and they're putting them over here and then the lower quality apples they're putting over there. So they're separating the apples according to maybe size, color, um, uh, whether they're damaged or not, and they're sorting those uh, goods. 
Okay, next word is ship. Now, ship can be a noun, but it can also be a verb, right? You can think of a big ship, right? This looks like a big ship. It's a cargo ship. It is a cargo ship. It's a really big ship. But ship can also be a verb. To ship, I want to ship something to you. That means I go to the post office, put the thing in a package, and send it to you. That is to ship. To send something by ship or another vehicle. If I send something to you, right? You live in another country, and I don't want to pay a lot of money. Sorry, and it doesn't matter that it takes a long time. It will. I go to the post office and give it to them. I say,、oh, it's okay. It takes a month. That's okay. It might take.、Uh, they might use a ship to get it to you. But if I say no, it's very urgent. Your birthday is tomorrow. I want you to get it quickly. Then it will be shipped by plane, right? So you can have air shipment or a ground shipment. Okay, good. Ripe. When something is ripe, it is fully grown. And ready to eat or to harvest. There's a difference between those. I'll talk about.、It. But think about an apple, right? If you go out in the orchard in the springtime, you look at the apple trees. There's no apples. Where are the apples? Well, after a little while, the flowers start to grow, right? And the flowers might turn into little buds, and they they're little tiny apples. Don't eat those. Ugh, they're terrible, right? You have to wait until the apple is fully grown and it changes color, right, into like bright red or sometimes green. There are a lot of green apples, and when that apple looks great, when it looks like it's really ready to eat, then it is ripe. It is ready to eat or To harvest. What does harvest mean? Harvest means、uh, that you go to the orchard or to the field and you take the ripe fruit or vegetables and you collect it. You don't eat it, right? Because first of all, you can't eat all of that. <laughs> That's too much. Oh my gosh! Besides, the other problem is that you want to sell it, right? You don't want to. You don't eat it all because then you don't make any money. So you want to harvest it. You want to gather it together in bushels and then you ship it. To the marketplace, and that's where you will sell it. So harvest just means to gather when something is ready to gather it up. Okay. Load. Now I just talked about harvest, right? You gather all the things together, you put them into baskets, and then you put them onto a truck. You load it onto a truck. So load means to put something or someone. On vehicles, right? So if you have a baby brother or a baby sister, your parents will load your baby brother or sister into the back seat. You know, put the seatbelt on when you go on a trip. So they will load your baby brother or sister into a vehicle. They、I、hope your parents don't load you into the vehicle. You can get in the vehicle by yourself. Okay, so they don't need to load you in. But if you want to put things into a A car, a vehicle, like your groceries. You go to the store and you help mom put the groceries into the car. You're loading the groceries into your car. Of course, it's also、uh, companies do this a lot too when they transport goods, when they ship goods from one area to another. Okay, that is our vocabulary section for today. A lot of interesting words. Lesson Eleven. From farm to you. Human resources. People's skills and abilities that a company or organization can use. Capital resources. Some things such as tools, machines, and buildings, which you need to produce goods. Orchard, an open area where people grow fruit trees. Irrigation, watering land through pipes to help crops grow. Sort, to arrange things in groups according to their kinds. Ship. To send something by ship or another vehicle. Ripe. Fully grown and ready for eating or harvest. Load. To put something or someone on vehicles.
Okay, let's start with the vocabulary. The first word is trade. We saw that in the introduction to this lesson. Trade. What does trade mean? Well, trade very simply means you have something I want, and I have something you want. So if the items are similar in value, we can just trade, right? If you have two gumballs and I have one lollipop. And you don't really want the gumballs, but you want my lollipop, and I want your gum. I don't really want my lollipop. We can trade. I give you a lollipop, you give me the gumballs. Good trade, right? That's trade. To and but on a bigger scale, right? To trade means to buy and sell goods and services. So think about much. Bigger scale, a, a very large scale, like a country making all sorts of goods and services. We talked about goods and services in a previous lesson, but a country offers or makes all types of goods and services. Another country might want those goods and services. Of course, they produce their own goods and services that the other country might want. So they trade these things with each other, and that's what we mean by. Trade, okay. Barter, barter is a type of trading, but barter means that you trade something without money. Now, usually, you know, I gave the example of the lollipop and the gumballs. That is an example of bartering because no money is involved. We're just trading, but we don't worry about money. However, what is the real cost of the two gumballs and the lollipop? Are they really equal? Maybe not. But to make it equal, we might say, "Well, the lollipop is worth twenty-five cents, and the two gumballs they're worth twenty cents. So there's a difference of five cents. But that might not mean anything to you and I. We don't care. It's just five cents." But for countries that are trading goods and services, they do care about how much exactly their goods or, or services are worth. So they will assign money to that, and money will be used for the trade. But if it's not important, or you think the items are similar value, then you can just trade, and that's called barter. A long time ago,、uh, before people really depended on money, they just used barter. They would trade a donkey for some wheat, right? And they would kind of figure out how much the donkey is worth in terms of wheat, and they would barter with each other. So barter is a type of trade, but barter does not use money. Okay.、Whew. Specialize. What are you good at? Are you good at doing something? Maybe you have a talent for making a good or doing some kind of service. If you focus your talents and develop your skills in doing that thing, then you are specializing in that thing. Now, it's very common that we use the word. In after specialize, you specialize in something, and specialize to choose and focus on one kind of crop or product. But it also means to specialize on a certain type of skill. If you're very good with computers and you like, you learn how to code computers. You might specialize in computer programming. That is your specialty. Specialty is a noun. What is your specialty? Specialty, specialty, which is a noun, and you could say my specialty is programming computers. Okay, his specialty is、uh, practicing law, for example, or a doctor specializes in medicine. Farmers might specialize in growing one type of crop. Or plant. Some farmers might specialize in growing corn. Some farmers might specialize in growing wheat, because they learn that plant, they learn all about it, and they devote all their efforts to it, so they can specialize in that certain plant or in that certain field. So, what will you specialize in when you get older? Okay. Rubber. That's an interesting picture for rubber. Of course, rubber. If you have a small ball that you can push and you can bounce and it bounces off the floor, the ball is probably made out of rubber. 
The bottom of your shoes, if you have tennis shoes, might be rubber. It might be a, a more high-tech、uh, material nowadays. But rubber is used for a lot of different things. The tires on your car, your family's car, those are made of rubber. Because rubber, what is rubber? It's a stretchy material. What does stretchy mean? Stretchy means you can stretch it, right? If you pull it on either side, it moves a little bit. You have some、uh, flexibility. So it's a stretchy material that is used to make things like tires and boots. That's another good example. Do you have a pair of rain boots? They are made of rubber, right? They protect your feet from the rain. So that's rubber. Next, we have wheat. I mentioned this before. Wheat is a grain that's very that's grown in a lot of countries, and it's a grain used for making flour. So, if you like pancakes, you are eating wheat that has been ground into a white powder we call flour. Sometimes it's white, sometimes it's brown. Depends on how they how they make it. But it's、uh, the wheat is grown in the fields. Very similar to rice. Right, rice is another food that we eat. And by the way, wheat, rice, corn—we call these things staples because they are the basic food for many people around the world. They're like a staple food:、uh, rice, wheat, corn,、uh, many other types of food that farmers will grow. We call those the staples, right? Because they kind of form the base, the basis of. Uh, diet for people around the world. Okay. Port. What is a port? Well, you've heard of airport, right? An airport is where airplanes come and fly. That's where the airports gather, right? They they land there and they take off there. But there's also a similar place for ships. And in fact, port is a much older word than airport, right? Ports have been around for thousands of years, for as long as human beings have made ships, and they carry goods by ship to a certain place. That place that becomes convenient for the ships to come in and to stay and then to leave, that place is called a port. And a port and cities and towns and villages grow up around it. Well, villages, towns, and cities will grow from ports because they become very busy places for human activity. So, a port is a city, town, or other place where ships can enter and leave. It's usually a natural,、uh, nice area for ships. Deep water. It's protected from big waves. These places become ports. San Francisco is an important port in America.、Uh, there's another important port at Incheon, right? That's an important port as well. So,、um, basically, it's just a place for. Ships to come in and leave, and like I said, port has been around for such a long time that when the invention of airplanes came to be, they thought, well, what should we call the place where airplanes come and leave? Well, let's call it an airport. Okay, so they used an old word for a new technology, and that happens a lot. Okay, so that's port. Dollar. Dollar is the name of money used in the United States, but also many other countries as well. Other countries also use dollars,、um, so it's not just the United States. Other countries like Australia they use the dollar. Canada uses a dollar, and many other countries also use dollars as the name of their money. And The、U、United States currency, though, is used very commonly around the world because it's kind of like a standard now. So many people will convert、uh, their national currency into dollars, and then maybe go to another country and use the dollars there. It's very useful if you travel or for trade. Okay, those are our vocabulary words for today. Lesson twelve. Countries trade goods. Trade to buy and sell goods and services. Barter to exchange one thing for another without using money. Specialize to choose and focus on one kind of crop or product. Rubber. 
A stretchy material that is used to make things like tires and boots. Wheat. The grain used for making flour. Port. A city, town, or other places where ships can enter and leave. Dollar. The name of money used in the United States. As usual, we start with the vocabulary. And our first word, very appropriate, is climate, right? We just used that word. It's a little bit of a difficult word, isn't it? But climate just means the weather in an area over a long period of time. So you might think, well, what's the difference between climate and weather? Climate when you think about climate, you're thinking about a very long time period. When you're thinking about the weather, it could just be today. If it's raining today, the weather today, we're talking about the weather today. It's raining. But maybe it doesn't rain every day of the year. Maybe you live in a desert and it only rains three days a year. So the weather might be rainy today, but the climate for the desert is dry and hot no rain or very little rain. So that is the difference between climate and weather. Climate is a very long uh, range or long period of time. What is the weather like over a long period of time? Weather is just, you know, you're talking about it very short, you know, today, tomorrow, next week, what will the weather be like? So climate is a long period, weather is a short period. Okay, so the weather in an area over a long period of time. What is the climate like in your country? What is the typical weather like in your country? Okay. Next, we have weather report. And on television, you can see people, meteorologists. Remember, we talked about meteorologists in a previous lesson. Meteorologist, meteor is from Greek. It means weather, right? People who study the weather. Uh, weather report is a report that predicts the weather conditions. So you see a meteorologist on television and she's talking about, you know, Friday it will be partly cloudy. Saturday there will be a few showers, a little bit of rain. But Sunday it'll be sunny. So uh, the weekend isn't completely ruined. At least you can enjoy the outdoors on Sunday. Okay, but probably it's Thursday today and she's giving us the weather report. What will the weather be like in the near future? Tomorrow, the next day, the day after that, and maybe next week. It's very hard to predict weather uh, very long for a very long period in the future. For example, after one week, the weather report usually isn't very accurate. It's very difficult to predict the weather one week from now. Okay, but within a week, yeah, we can get pretty accurate weather reports. Okay. Storm. A storm is a type of weather condition and it's very bad weather with strong winds, rain, lightning, lightning, psh, that's electricity coming out of the clouds. Zeus is very angry. No, of course, that's the old Greek god, right? The god of, th of lightning, thunder and lightning. But lightning is the flash of light that you see. It's electricity in the air and thunder. Thunder is a really loud sound you hear after you see the flash of light. Lightning and thunder. Okay, thunder and lightning. Okay, so that's a storm. Very bad weather. And we have a picture of a storm. Now, like I said, a storm, and we can see that there are very high winds. They're very high winds. And if you're at the ocean or you're at the beach, those winds will cause the waves to be very large. So during a storm, it's a good idea to stay away from the beach, right? Stay away from, don't play in the water because the water is going to be very strong. But the storm pushes the winds, the winds push the water, and that makes very big waves. And of course, a lot of rain will come. They'll see some lightning and hear some thunder. Okay. 
Next, we have lightning. As I said before, lightning is a sudden bright light caused by electricity in the sky. Electricity in the sky? Who turned on the light switch? No, of course, there's no light switch. It's just electric power, of course, is caused by、uh, different charged particles in the atmosphere interacting with the ground, right? And that the energy in the clouds wants to、uh, release itself and go into the ground where there's less energy. So it will form lightning. Electricity will form out of thin air and just come down. And maybe hit the ground. You don't want to be on the ground where the lightning hits, and that's why many buildings have a metal pole because that will attract the lightning. We call those lightning rods. A lightning rod is a metal pole on top of a building, so the lightning will hit the pole and not hit the people walking around the street.、Whew. So lightning rods are are important to protect. People and buildings, right? The metal can absorb the electricity and the heat, and it won't burn. So that's it's better that the lightning hits the lightning rod than it hits you or your house、uh, made of wood and burns. So lightning rods. So a sudden bright light caused by electricity in the sky. Next, electricity. What is electricity? As you know, electricity is a form of energy that gives power to machines and lights. Right? We have lots of lights. You have lots of lights in your house. Right? You use your computer. You turn it on. That means you supply electricity to your computer. Without electricity, your computer won't work. Your phone won't work. A lot of devices that you have will not work without electricity. Next, we have fit. Now, fit has a lot of different meanings, but in this case, fit means that it's good enough for something. It's fit. If you say "I am fit," right? That means you're healthy. I am fit. You're healthy. You're good. Well, you're always good enough for something. You're always good.、Um, but fit in this case, this one, "I am fit" means I am healthy, right?、Uh, strong, right? Capable. Fit also means that. If you put on a shirt or a coat, it fits you well, right? It fits. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's fit. It fits you. It's good enough for you. Okay, so that's what that means there. Okay, the last word is chance. And chance, what is chance? Chance is a possibility that something might happen, and we can have small chances or large chances. Chance, just you know, we don't know what. The future will hold. The future has many possibilities, and we can choose those possibilities. In most cases, this is a good picture because it shows the different possibilities for your future. Right? Maybe this one you will open. Now, like I said, there are big chances and small chances. Now, I don't want to discourage anybody, but what is the chance that you might become a famous singer? Right? It's a small chance. I'm sorry, but you have to work hard. You have to put a lot of effort to become a famous singer. Not many people become famous singers or athletes.、Uh, the chance for doing that is very small. But what's the chance of you growing up and being a father or a mother? The chance is a lot larger because that's very common. Many people do that, and it's just kind of a normal、uh, thing to do in life. So the chance of being a mother or father is very big. The chance of becoming a famous person, like a musician or an athlete, is very small. So we have big chances and small chances. Small chances and large chances—they're just possibilities that something might happen. Okay, those are our words for today. Lesson thirteen: Weather and climate. Climate: The weather in an area over a long period of time. Weather report: A report that predicts the weather conditions. Storm: Very bad weather with strong winds, rain, lightning, and thunder. Lightning: A sudden bright light caused by electricity in the sky. Electricity. A form of energy that gives power to machines. Fit. 
good enough for something. Chance, a possibility that something happens. Okay, we always start with our vocabulary section, and the first word in the vocabulary section is region. Region. Region is the same as an area. It's an area that has shared characteristics. Shared characteristics. What does that mean? Characteristics are qualities or、uh, things that are the that are that you can say about something. Adjectives. Are usually used to describe characteristics. For example, if someone is tall, that is a characteristic about that person. If we talk about regions or areas, and we say it's rainy there a lot, that is a characteristic. So shared characteristics means that it's an area that the characteristics are true for the whole area, and we can see that if we look at this map. For example. The Southwest in America. What are some things that are shared in this region? Well, it's characterized by deserts. It's dry. It's hot.、Uh, there's. It doesn't snow during the winter. Those are characteristics that's shared by the entire region. And you can see that the region is divided into states: Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. And、uh, those areas do share those same characteristics. The, we use the same adjectives to describe all of those different states. Those states comprise or make up one region. And of course, we have the different regions、um, divided here. You can divide a country by region. You can divide the world by regions. And that's kind of what we're talking about in this lesson. Another word that's important for this lesson is geography. Geography is the study and research of the Earth's surface. Now, here's a little word to remember this by: geo. Geo is a is a what we call a prefix. A prefix comes before the the base word or what we call the root word. And geo means earth. So whenever you see a word that starts with geo, you know that they're talking about the earth. For example, geography. Geography is the study and research and making maps of the earth's surface. Geology is the study of the earth. So geo means earth. Okay, good. Our next word: cardinal directions. Cardinal just here means basic or、uh, basic directions. Cardinal directions are the four basic, right? Cardinal and basic are similar. The four basic directions of north, south, east, and west. I did that for me. That was opposite for you, right? For you, I think east is that way and west is that way, right? For me, east is that way. So it flips around. But north and south. Okay, so those are the four cardinal directions. In other words, the four basic directions. There are other directions, of course. You can combine them, right? If you go in this direction, you're going north east, right? By the way, it's interesting. If you go this way, it's north north east, right? So those are not cardinal directions. Those are getting more complicated, right? The four basic directions: north, south, east, west. But when we talk about which direction you should go, sometimes people say go north northeast or go south southwest, for example, and that's in between those four cardinal directions. Okay. Intermediate directions—that's what I just talked about, right? Directions between the cardinal directions, and we see that on this map: northeast, northwest, southwest, and southeast. Those are the intermediate directions. Intermediate—they come in between the four cardinal directions. And as I said before, you also have—you、uh, can also break it down even more specifically and say northeast, east, right? 
So we can also do that. Okay, to be more specific. So cardinal directions and intermediate directions. The equator. Do you live near the equator? The equator is the middle of the earth. If you think about the earth as a big basketball, right? Going around in space. The line that goes around the center, right? At the very、um, middle of that basketball, we call that the equator. Okay, now that's an interesting idea. It's not real, of course. If you go there, you won't see a line on the ground. That's kind of crazy, <laughs> but it's an imaginary line. We, when we think about our environment, you know, as human beings, we like to divide things. We like to measure things. We like to give names to certain features of our environment, of our surroundings, and so we have given the imaginary idea of an equator. It's an imaginary line around the middle of the Earth. And it goes like this, and you'll notice that it's interesting. It's not straight up and down, right? Because the Earth, as we learned in a science lesson before, is actually tilted. So the the line will、uh, go around like this, but it's at the it's at the fattest part of the Earth. You could say that because you know the Earth isn't actually a a, a perfectly round. Sphere. It's more. It's kind of fat around the middle because of the way it spins. Okay, and the and the gravity that's exerted on it. So it kind of bulges out a little bit at the middle. But at that area, we call it the equator. And the equator separates the north and the south part of the Earth. So if you are north of the equator, you are in the northern hemisphere. South of the equator, you're in the southern hemisphere. We'll see those ideas again. Now, on the pole, that is as far away from the equator as you can get. There are two poles, of course, right? There's only one equator because there's only one middle, but the poles are at the top and the bottom of the Earth. Okay, so the pole is the most northern or southern points of the Earth. Okay, and it's interesting because. It says here the most northern or southern points of the Earth. That's one way to look at the North Pole and the South Pole, because there are different poles. Actually, there is the magnetic pole, and then there is the、uh, the physical North Pole, the actual top of the Earth, and they're different. The magnetic North Pole is quite far off from the actual most northern point or the top of the globe. Okay, so that's interesting. But the pole, we say the North Pole and the South Pole. They're as far away from the equator as you can get. To divide, divide is to separate into two parts. Here we have a picture of a piece of bread, sandwich bread, it looks like. And if you, you know, kind of tear it apart, you got to be careful. I would use a knife, but anyway, if you don't have a knife, you just tear it apart carefully. You divide it, one for you, one for me. It's to share. Now you don't always divide things to share them. The equator divides the Earth into two parts. I said the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. The equator will divide or to separate the、uh, a thing, whether it's the Earth or a piece of bread. You divide it. You separate it into two parts. Okay. Hemisphere. Now, as, as I said, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. So, the northern hemisphere, as I said, here is the equator, right? This line here is the equator. Now we have the northern hemisphere. Anything north of that line is in the northern hemisphere, okay? And anything south of this line is the southern hemisphere. Hemi means half. Sphere is a Three-dimensional round ball. So hemisphere is half of that, right? It's the top half, the northern half of that, the northern hemisphere. And again, for the southern hemisphere, same idea, right? The southern half sphere is basically what we're saying. So it's the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. Hemisphere, hemi, half of the sphere. Hemi is half. Right, and it's right here actually. A half of the Earth that is cut according to the equator. Again, the equator is the dividing line. It is the line that divides north from south. Okay. Okay, those are our words for today. Lesson fourteen. Our Earth. 
Region. An area that has shared characteristics. Geography. The study and research of the Earth's surface. Cardinal directions. The four basic directions of north, south, east, and west. Intermediate directions. Directions between the cardinal directions. Equator. An imaginary line around the middle of the Earth. Pole. The most northern or southern points of the Earth. Divide. To separate into parts. Hemisphere. A half of the Earth that is cut according to the equator. Okay, the first word in the vocabulary is plow. P and L together. P, L. Plow. So P and then L sound. Your tongue is on the roof of your mouth behind your front teeth. L. Plow. Plow. To plow is it's a verb, so it means to turn over a field. It doesn't mean, of course, to take the whole field and turn it over. It means to take the dirt or the soil in the field and with an instrument like a hoe and uh, bring the dirt that's on the bottom to the top. And that's called turning over a field or land with a farming tool. Now I mentioned a hoe, but of course there are many different ways to do it. You can do it by hand, which is very difficult, takes a long time. Uh, of course people used horses, donkeys, uh, cows, oxes, but nowadays of course people use machinery and that's the picture that we see. And as you can see, you have one, two, three, four, four pieces of metal digging into the earth. So that does the work of four people or four horses at one time. So of course machinery has made our lives a lot easier and has made work much more efficient. So to plow a field is to turn over the land. Why do farmers do that? Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, get the soil that's underneath the ground up on the surface and also to help uh, get air into the, uh, the soil and to break it up so that the land will absorb water more easily. And of course, these are good conditions for growing plants. Basically, they're preparing the land to make it uh, more uh, suitable for growing plants so that the plants will grow faster and better and healthier. Okay. Next we have harvest. So you plow the field in the spring, right? In the springtime, the farmers are out plowing the land and then they plant the seeds, of course. Over the summertime, those plants will grow. In the fall, it's time to harvest. Now harvest can be a noun or a verb. In this case, it's a verb. To harvest means to collect the crops. So after the plants have grown and they have produced fruit or vegetables or whatever it is the farmers are growing, in the fall, it's time to go out and gather all those crops to send it to the supermarket. Um, so to collect crops or plants from the fields and hopefully farmers look forward to a good harvest. And Thanksgiving in the fall is a celebration of hopefully a good harvest. Okay, it's a way to celebrate. Oh, good, we, 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 you know, we, the planting season is over. We've harvested all the food. Let's have a big feast to celebrate. Not many Thanksgivings are like that, but they celebrate the harvest. In that case, the harvest is a noun. So harvest can be noun or it can be verb. Okay. Builder. A builder is a person that builds. Very easy, right? We have ER. Many words have ER. It means a person who does the uh, action indicated in the root of the word. In this case, to build, build, builder, right? At a, at a restaurant, you know, if you wait, if your job is to wait for the customer, you are a waiter or waitress, right? So ER, it, we add it to, to designate that that's a person 
who does that thing. Not always, but it's a very common pattern in English. So, a builder is a person that makes buildings, right? In this case, this gentleman here, he is making a brick wall. He is putting, he is, uh, putting bricks together to make a brick wall to make a building. Okay, so that's a builder. Dig. And of course, you can say digger, right? This person is a digger, right? But here we just have the verb, right? Dig, to dig. To dig means to make a hole in soil, soil, dirt, the ground, with a tool or hands. Oh, don't do that. You'll get all dirt all over your hands and under your fingernails. But you'll notice that dogs like to dig holes, not with their hands, of course, with their paws, but it's like their hands. But we call them paws, P-A-W-S. P-A-W-S. But they're still digging, right? Dogs don't use a tool. They're not out there with a shovel, right? They're using their, their paws to dig a hole. So anytime that uh, a person or an animal uh, creates a hole in the ground, that verb is called to dig. And some animals are very good at digging, right? They make their homes underground. Okay, so that's to dig. Tunnel. Now a tunnel, if you dig deep enough and you go down and then you go, you go not down, but you go across, right? Or maybe you dig through a mountain, especially in this case, right? Uh, there's a town here and a town here and there's a mountain in between. Well, people will dig a tunnel through the mountain. Of course, a tunnel is just an underground path that is made through a mountain or a hill. Uh, also, it could also be under some other geological feature like uh, uh, water. For example, there's a very famous tunnel between Britain and France, and that goes under the channel, uh, the British Channel or the English Channel. And basically, that's a tunnel that they dug that had to go down, right, to go under the water, and it comes, you know, goes down in Britain and it comes back up in France or goes down in France and comes up in England. Um, so that is a, another famous tunnel, right? So it's any underground path that is made through a mountain, a hill, or even underwater, or even under the city. Many of your, if you live in a large city, you might have a subway system, and the subway tunnels are under the city. So any underground path, okay? Whether it's for, you know, an animal, right? Animals dig tunnels, a person, a walking tunnel, a cars, or even trains, subways, whatever. They're all, we all call those tunnels. Okay. Dam. Dam is another uh, very huge project, uh, engineering project that people will build, builders will build. And a dam is a kind of wall. And as you can see, it's a wall that uh, holds water back. So it's a wall that, uh, that, that prevents water from flowing naturally. Now, of course, water is allowed to flow through the dam. And in fact, that's a very good way uh, to collect that energy. And that would be a hydroelectric dam. Hydro. Hydro, by the way, means water. And electric, of course, you know, electric, electricity, elect, oops, electric, yeah, I gotta pay more attention to spelling and a little less attention to talking. <laughs> Hydroelectric. So hydro means electricity from water, right? Hydro means water, right? So this is a good way. Uh, many dams are hydroelectric dams. They take that energy from the flowing water and they convert that uh, energy into electricity, which is another form of, of energy. So a dam is a kind of wall that is built across a river. Of course, you know, you build it across a river to prevent water from flowing. Of course, it doesn't prevent, it, you're not saying, okay, you don't want any water to flow. You do want water to flow. But what dams do usually is to regulate that water. So for example, you might live in an area where there's a lot of rain. And every year it might flood downstream. But if you build a dam there, then you can control the amount of water and make sure the amount of water that's flowing out of the dam is the same all year round, no matter what the weather conditions are. So that's one reason why people build dams. Another reason why people build dams is because they want to have a supply of fresh water for a nearby city, for example. Um, uh, Hoover Dam, this isn't Hoover Dam. No, that's not Hoover Dam. But there's a famous Hoover Dam near Las Vegas in Nevada. And of course, uh, 
Las Vegas uses a lot of the water uh, that is dammed up there for the city, for the people who live in the city. So that's another reason to build a dam. So there's a lot of different reasons for dam building. Okay. Negative. Negative is something that is harmful, unpleasant, or bad. What is the opposite of negative? Of course, the opposite of negative is positive. So if you're talking about something and you're describing it, you can talk about the negative side of something. Those are the harmful or bad, unpleasant things or aspects about a, a person, a place, a thing, an object. Or on the other hand, you can talk about the positive things, and those are the, the, the good things, the, the pleasant things, the nice things that people like about something. So negative, positive, they are opposite. Okay, pesticide, a pesticide. Now this is an interesting word, okay? Pesticide, pest, if, I don't know if you know this, what is a pest? A pest is something that bothers you. And of course, insects bother people, all right? You're trying to sleep, there's a mosquito buzzing around your head, right? That's a pest, right? Or if you're walking through the, uh, the forest and you get insects on your legs that are on your feet or on your ankles that might bite you, right? Those, you don't like those, that's bothering you. That's a pest. Now, what does side mean? Side means to kill, right? Uh, so side, for example, Homicide is uh, the act of killing another person, a human being. Uh, suicide is killing oneself. Genocide is killing a whole race of people or a whole group of people. So side means death or killing. So basically this means killing insects, right? Pesticide is a noun and it's a chemical, uh, but it's actually a chemical, it's a poison because it's a type of chemical that can kill living organisms. So pesticide is a poison that is used to kill, right, side, uh, to kill insects, pests, that damage crops. So farmers will use pesticides to kill the insects, and that is, of course, to prevent the insects from eating all of their crops, right? So, of course, when the farmer goes through all this work to grow crops, whether it's corn, uh, broccoli, uh, apples, whatever they're growing, this is a great food source for insects to move in and eat all the food, right? Of course, farmers don't want that, so they spray their crops with pesticide, and that will kill the insects and prevent them from eating all of their fruit. However, there are some negative sides to pesticides, too. So we have positive, you know, we just talked about negative and positive. So there are positive aspects to pesticides. There are also, of course, negative aspects to pesticides as well. So it's very important to balance these two. Okay, so anyway, that's pesticide. And that is our words. Those are our words for today's lesson. Lesson 15. We change our environment. Plow. To turn over a field or land with a farming tool. Harvest. To collect crops or plants from the fields. Builder. A person that makes buildings. Dig. To make a hole in soil with a tool or hands. Tunnel. An underground path that is made through a mountain. Dam. A kind of wall that is built across a river to prevent water from flowing. Negative. Harmful, unpleasant, or bad. Pesticide. A poison used to kill insects that damage crops.